originated at Branson, Missouri's Silver Dollar City back in 2009. We both have music education degrees, but we had never heard of the Mountain Dulcimer until we encountered the Cedar Creek Dulcimer kiosk near the park exit. Once we learned how to strum a couple of easy tunes, Karen and I were quickly drawn to the beautiful sound of the instrument. We were also fascinated with the brief history lesson that we received. We had no idea that the Mountain Dulcimer was the first instrument invented in the United States once we actually became a country. No purchase was made that day, but a seed was definitely planted. Do what? Thirteen months. That's how long it took for us to get a mountain dulcimer. Um, we didn't waste the thirteen months. What we did was we uh, did a lot of research online, and unfortunately, we didn't have enough knowledge of the instrument to know what information was good and what information was not good. So um, there was a lot of times where um, we had so much information it just kind of turned our brains to monkey poo. get over it. Anyway, what we did was we finally had um, a guy that I worked with, James Andrews, came in one day, they were downsizing because he was getting ready to retire and he had a mountain dulcimer. And he said, uh, I've, I've had this thing, I'm not using it much anymore, uh, I'd be happy to sell it to you. So he, he sold it to me and I got a really good deal on it and I uh, took it home and of course Karen immediately was excited and she said, yeah, I swore to meet one just like it. So we did. And what we discovered was that we genuinely did love the instrument, but we also discovered that these little student model dulcimers that we started with, uh, we soon outgrew them. Okay, listen up people. When John and I first started to learn to play the dulcimer, we bought all different kinds of dulcimers three-string dulcimers, four-string dulcimers, and dulcimers with different kinds of wood. Are you kidding me? The thing that changed for us was when we went to a workshop and we were able to um, try some different instruments and hear the way people played. And the most important thing that we learned about uh, listening to other people and hearing other people demonstrate instruments and tell us why they liked them and why they didn't was that we have to find an instrument that calls to our heart. And if you do that, it'll make your heart sing. The biggest thing is making sure that if you have the opportunity to do it, try as many dulcimers as you can before you pick that mountain dulcimer for you. Doesn't mean you'll only ever have one, but please make sure that you try to expose yourself to as many different kinds as you can. If you don't have that opportunity, please rely on the opinions of some people that you know are good players and have your best interest at heart. Once people decide to play the mountain dulcimer, one of the things that always happens is, okay, what do I play? How do I play? What style am I going to use? It's very common for people this day and time to either play in a noter drone style with a little noter that's actually a little piece of wood or in what we call a finger dance style 
which basically is like playing with a noter except you're using your fingers, you're doing all your melody on the melody string, or in what they call a chord melody style where you're actually playing chords with your fingers and playing melody lines with your fingers at the same time. Any of those are a great way to start, but it's, you know, not a thing where you have to limit yourself to one thing. You can actually, once you start something and try it, branch out and try the other styles. They're all actually very fun and very fulfilling to do. Awesome! One of the things that Karen and I discovered once we started playing the mountain dulcimer was that most mountain dulcimer players love to play fiddle tunes. We didn't grow up listening to fiddle tunes. We grew up listening to rock and roll. Party! The beauty of playing the mountain dulcimer is you can play whatever music that you want to, but it's fun to experiment with different things and maybe sometimes outside of your comfort zone. You can play rock, you can play blues, you can play country, but you can also do more traditional things like Celtic and fiddle tunes, folk songs. There's lots of stuff out there. That's when sometimes the intimidation factor comes in the jam. One of the most hilarious things to me that I remember in the early process is we were in Palestine, Texas at the Old Pal Festival, a wonderful festival that uh, the Wrights put on. And we're sitting there in the main hallway of the building and we were right smack dab in the middle of this humongous jam. Uh, myself and Karen were there, Bean Futch was there, and down sits Don Petty, who knows every song ever written for fiddle. I mean, it's, he's just got a vast repertoire. There's a picture somewhere, I have no idea who took the picture, but I'm glad they did, because it captures a, a moment in time in, in our dulcimer journey that Don Petty would call out a song and he would look across at me and Karen and say, y'all know this one? And we'd go, no, we don't know that one. And he'd go, oh really? I can't believe that. And then we'd get to another song and he'd call out one and he would say, y'all know this one? And we'd go, no, don't know that one. I don't know. But the thing about it is, there's a way to survive in a jam if somebody calls a tune that you don't play or that you don't know. And what that basically is, is the safety of your D chord, your G chord, your A chord, and sometimes a B minor chord. If you're tuned in D, A, D, which this day and time a lot of people are, uh, you can simply just get by with, with these chords and while you're strumming the chords you can listen to the tune and hopefully pick it up. And we've actually picked up a lot of songs just doing just that. People will say, well, do y'all know this tune? We'll say, no, but we'll figure something out. And that's what we basically try to do sometimes if somebody calls a tune that we don't know. We know a few more, luckily, now than we used to, but we still, we still have uh, opportunity to hear a song that we're learning instead of just know it. Now, you don't have to play chords in a jam. You can sit there and just pick out the melody, and sometimes that's what people like to do as well. Uh, we kind of gravitated towards the chords, but there's nothing wrong with sitting in a jam and just playing the melody on the melody string, either with your fingers or with a noter. That works out fine, too. That's all I got. <laughs> Remember, this is about fun. Do not be intimidated. Have fun at the jam. Mm -hmm.